Now, Ryan's plan calls for phasing out the traditional Medicare program and replacing it with a plan to, sub, to provide subsidies to seniors to buy private insurance. Now, the effect would be to raise health costs for seniors, especially affluent ones. It wouldn't affect anyone currently over the age of 55. Christopher Favell has been studying the plan. He's a health care analyst for Bloomberg Government, and he joins us now from Washington. Uh, so we knew here, Chris, that the, the heart of this was going to be around entitlement cuts, specifically Medicare and Medicaid. You've run the numbers. How much of a difference is Ryan truly going to make? Well, we should start by saying that the, the plan proposed today isn't actually that detailed on Medicare and Medicaid. He's got some broad strokes he's outlined, but in terms of the actual savings, they're hard to nail down. Start with Medicare. The big change to Medicare, as you noted, is this switch to the current fee-for-service system to something like what you could call a voucher or a, a subsidy for premiums. Uh, that wouldn't kick in until 2022, so the savings for that are a long way down the road. Medicaid, the program for the poor, that would be essentially cut right away through some sort of a block grant approach to states. States can then decide how to distribute that cut or that reduced growth. So lots of savings for Medicaid, almost none this decade for Medicare. The savings there are in the future and they're hard to predict. So it touches that third rail in making those cuts, but it doesn't really move the needle that much. It sounds like that's what you're saying. Alice Ridlin was on the show yesterday saying that she likes the concept, but it doesn't roll out fast enough and it's not generous enough uh, to recipients of Medicare. Is that a fair criticism? I, I think it is. There's, there's a contradiction here. Paul Ryan has said, rightly, I think, that Medicare is one of the biggest drivers of the federal deficit. At the same time, he's saying, but let's not get serious about cutting it for another 10 years. Uh, now, you could argue that politics is what makes that make sense. Uh, people who are right now over 55 wouldn't see a change when they get to Medicare. They also vote in higher numbers than the young. They vote more Republican than the young. So there's a political calculus here that, that can't be ignored. The cuts to Medicaid, I think, will be more of a lightning rod around this plan. They're, they're quick and they're huge, uh, and they affect a huge range of people, women, children, they're in every state. Whether I think he can pull that off will be a big test. You also make the point in your analysis, which I really enjoyed reading, um, that demographics really aren't taken into account enough. That is to say, once you get past that bulk of the baby boomers, the math, the formula needs to change. Yeah, one of the things I was hoping to see in today's proposal and, and that was not there is an idea of specifically what formula uh, he would use to grow this voucher or premium support payment. Uh, in his previous plan with Alice Ridland from November, he said he would grow it at GDP per capita plus one percentage point. That sounds wonkish and in the, in the weeds, but it's very important determining whether you save money and if so, how much you save. We found under his last plan, they actually wouldn't save money in the first year. That's the only year we had numbers for because you go so far out, it's hard to project. So the actual mechanics of the formula by which you determine the level of payments, hugely important and absent from today's proposal. All right. Uh, thank you very much for running the numbers for us, Chris, and giving us thank your you. quick read.